You know what? This is exactly the uplifting, hilarious, inappropriate most of the time movie that we needed after seeing Infinity War because I was depressed and this movie just helped lift me up. I'm Sharana from Pay Her Weights and today I'm going to be reviewing Deadpool 2 which stars Ryan Reynolds and Josh Brolin and is directed by David Leach who you know from directing 2017's Atomic Blonde. Now before I get into this, this is going to be a spoiler free review. I am not going to ruin anything for, for you and your viewing experience before you go see it when it comes out this Friday. So let's jump into it. This movie is hilarious. I love that this movie is funny. It knows that it is a superhero movie making, making fun of other superhero movies while making fun of the movie that they're in at the current point in time. And that's why I enjoy it. I laughed at the jokes. There are a couple of inappropriate jokes. One joke to be exact that happened. I was just like, my friend laughed next to me. I was like, you are such a pervert. And then I was like, but I'm a pervert too because I knew exactly what that joke meant. But it's okay because it's an inappropriate movie just meant to make us laugh and just have a good time and it's what I needed after being depressed from Affinity War just a few weeks ago. So Ryan Reynolds, he just does such a great job here and I really feel like this was the redeeming moment for him with these Deadpool movies, especially from his previous Deadpool that he had in the Wolverine movie and then also the Green Lantern and I love that he makes fun of how horrible those movies were, okay? So I also have to say that I love Zazie Beats as Domino. I thought she did a really great job. I think that she is one of the better female, um, better female characters that I've seen in these comic book movies who actually had something to do and kind of went toe to toe with the baddie. Kind of baddie, not really baddie in this film. And so I really enjoyed her. Now also too, the kid who plays Russell, this little kid was super funny. He was hilarious. Like he went toe to toe with Wade and I felt like they were the perfect match for one another with the banter that they had back and forth. And speaking of banter back and forth, Colossus and Wade's dysfunctional relationship is just so fun to watch. I love the jokes that come from it. I love how it flowed into the storyline. It's just, I love Colossus. This has made me like a favorite of Colossus in these films. And so even just making fun of between the different timelines that we're actually in. So. Those are just a brief few, few of the things that I really enjoyed about the film. While I still like the film overall, there are some issues that I have with it. And first and foremost, it is Cable, played by Josh Brolin, who many know as Thanos, who just ruined our lives a couple weeks ago, but I felt underwhelmed by his character. I don't know, and just to give a little backstory for those who haven't, who don't know who Cable is from the comics, Cable is basically the um, biological child of Cyclops and Madeline Pryor, who was actually the clone of Jean Grey okay and so basically he's supposed to be used he was going to be used as a weapon to defeat Apocalypse but Apocalypse found out about it and then injected him with a virus which is why he has this little metal arm thing going on and he had to go be sent into the future so he wouldn't die okay that's just a brief backstory I didn't want to give it all to you but it's just like I was just expecting a little bit more for him because he's supposed to be this badass warrior from the future who's coming back. The whole premise of the film is Wade is protecting this kid Russell from Cable who wants to kill Russell, but I'm not going to tell you why he wants to kill him. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole premise of the movie in a nutshell. He's trying to protect this kid. Cable's coming after them. And it's just them going back and forth. There's this other villain in the movie who's really not even worth mentioning, so I'm not even going to go into it. But I just felt underwhelmed, even with the action scenes with Cable, who you can't help to think like Terminator or think Bucky because he has his whole like metal arm thing going on. While I love the technology that he used to fight against people in the film, some of the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, it just felt very slow. Like, damn, I know this is a robotic arm, but this is, the, I just, I can't get into this fight scene right now. So I just felt over underwhelmed. And I don't know if I feel underwhelmed just because he was just Thanos. And so I'm expecting him not to be as like, he's the ultimate baddie, but I just wanted a little bit more in this film. I don't know if, the, if I was just asking for too much, if I was just expecting too much but I needed a little bit more so I personally felt let down by cable I don't know if you will feel the same way when you go see it those are just my thoughts also to another issue that I did have in the film was the x-force like I needed more screen time for them now what they did with them and why they have less screen time is it was funny 
it got laughs. I, I enjoyed it, but I still wanted to see a little bit more. And there's definitely some cameos in this uh, movie that you really need to pay attention to because some of them are gonna go by so quickly. You're gonna be like, damn, wait a minute, what's that? I think it was. And then, um, but the biggest one of them all, the surprise that comes into the film, and I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about and you're gonna freaking love it because it was amazing. Except I wanted it to be like something else to happen with it, but I'll maybe I'll do a spoiler review and then tell you what I'm actually talking about. But also too, you have to say there's two post credit scenes and the second scene, it has to be like the best post credit scene ever in a comic book movie because it was absolutely hilarious and I loved every moment of it and the audience went wild over it. But those were really my only hiccups that I had with the film. I felt like also too, they tried to throw in an emotional aspect and I was just like, it's not one of these movies and they did it and I was like, I get why they tried to do it, but it was just like, I could have lived without it. But I mean, it was just like, they were trying to just make the story flow. They were trying to keep it going. Movie got a little slow towards the middle of it. Then it kind of sped back up towards the third act of the film. But overall, like I enjoyed the movie. I would definitely say pay to go see this movie in theaters. I don't feel like people will leave feeling disappointed. I just felt slightly underwhelmed from it. And for me, I still feel as though that the first Deadpool was a better movie to me. I felt like this was kind of had the symptoms of what they did with Kingsman, Kingsman the second movie movie where they were like oh this first movie was so cool and it was so great and everybody loved it so let's like put that first movie on steroids into the second movie let's just do a whole bunch of crap that really doesn't matter and that's just kind of how I felt I was just like yeah it was good I had a smile on my face I laughed like it, it was an enjoyable fun ride but for me I don't know if I would necessarily watch this again but it doesn't make it a bad movie but at this point I'm rambling so let me go ahead and wrap this up my name is Sharonda from Pay Our Way, and as always, if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit like, share this video with your friends, and I will see you soon.